Okay, let's get started on part three of this video. I just want to answer a couple of questions. I had some emails and uh, there's a couple of good questions in there. And one of the questions were, how do you check for TDC and why? Now, TDC, all we're doing is verify that the piston is at the top of the cylinder, um, top dead center, hence TDC. And when we put our timing marks on, we when we wind our timing marks up, we're going to base it off of number one. So we need number one to be a TDC, top dead center. It's the easiest way to explain it to you. And the other question was, how do you know you have the camshaft in properly? And it's, uh, I was trying to find an easy way to explain that, but here's the deal. For every revolution of the crankshaft, this goes to have a half a revolution. So it'll always be 180 degrees to full revolution. So don't worry about your camshaft. For instance, let's just do something. I just have a, I have a cheap old magnetic base here. Bear with me for a second. And a dial indicator. All right. So let's, we're not even going to set it up. You can see that the, uh, where I can see, maybe you can't, that the uh, indicator just protrudes past the base. Let's get this in the center. Now we're okay in the center of the piston because uh, we have a high spot there and uh, the piston's down the hole. And uh, it won't actually protrude up past the uh, cylinder and hit the base. So we should be good right there. Watch that, uh, here, let me move this. Just watch the uh, dial gauge. We don't have to set it to zero, we don't have to do anything. We just need it to get it to maximum height. So let's get it to maximum height. We'll check the timing marks after we do that too, just so I can show you. So like I say, don't worry about the numbers, just watch the gauge. It's going to eventually stop, even though we're moving very slowly, and I'm still moving, it'll dwell at TDC briefly. And then it'll uh, start going back down. Okay, right there. We are a TDC. I just, I went a little bit past. By about a thou. I can see it. You might not be able to. Okay. We're a TDC. That's the highest point of the piston. Top dead center. When we look at the timing marks, we'll just take a look and see where they're at. Okay, so they're lined up exactly one on top of each other down here at the bottom. And the question was, for the person that sent me an email, was, does this mark have to be the 6 o'clock or the 12 o'clock position? And they're worried they're going to have it out. It doesn't matter where you put it, as long as it's lined up. So we have number one piston, which we base everything off of, a TDC. Our marks are lined up. And that's what we want. We should degree this camshaft, but we're not going to. I don't degree stock camshafts. They don't supply cards. It gets complicated trying to explain this to people how to do it. And for the most part, it's probably not warranted. I'm not going to do it on this video anyway. This is where we're at. Now, if somebody put this all together and they put their distributor back in their vehicle and they went to start it and it was popping out the exhaust and uh, acting funny and wouldn't run, it's probably 180 degrees out. And what they thought they did wrong was they thought by putting this mark here instead of up here caused it not to run. So they take the car back apart again. And if anybody's thinking this doesn't happen, this happened a lot back in the day. But you didn't never need to do any of this. All you need to do is pick the distributor up out of the engine, spin the rotor 180 degrees, put it back in, and it would have started and been fine. I just wanted to clear up, clear that up because somebody asked about it, so... I hope for the person that asked that helped and I hope for the person that asked about TDC basically like I say top to center piston all the way to the top line up your marks you're good to go and you can spin that engine over and over and over again until you're comfortable where exactly it is set your dial indicator to zero do it again and put your stuff on whatever makes you comfortable that's all you need to do okay so we're going to do a bit of a pre-assembly here before we go through everything we're just going to 
so there's two delta pins here. Obviously, you just set this into two delta pins. Don't fight this. If there's a problem, just deal with it. If you have to correct a deal, a pardon me, a delta pin with a bit of a, a notch in it or whatever. But don't force this on. There's no point. You can just deal with any problem you have whenever you, whenever you get there. The right bolt. That's very important. Now, we could just measure that right now. So let me grab my calipers. So this bolt will be over top of the main bearing. Okay. So how much room do we have here? All right. So here's our distance from the top to the bottom. Okay. So we have adequate room here. This bolt is not too long, and this is definitely the oil pump bolt. Just check that all the time. You want adequate threads, but you don't want it to be too long to hit the bottom of that bearing. That would be catastrophic. Okay, so let's talk about how we got here. So to begin with, when we're installing our oil pump, we want to make sure of a couple things. Number one, we want to make sure we have the right oil pump bolt, and we do. With the oil pump, we want to make sure our surface is good and we don't have any raised areas here. We don't have any issues. That our dowels are good and they're not uh, they're not hurt either. If they are, we just want to take a couple minutes and fix that. We don't want to pound it on there or, you know, force it on. Then we want to make sure that we have our oil pump, or pardon me, our oil pump pickup clearance proper. So what we do, this is awesome. Now I have to, there we go. We uh, just install the oil pump, and we, we're not going to torque it up. Like, there's 65 foot-pounds, which is why they have the bolt they have, right? We're not going to torque it up just to set the, uh, the clearance for the oil pump pickup. But we just gave it a little bit of a snug to make sure that oil pump is securely on there. I measured the depth of the oil pan, and we had uh, seven and a half inches. They recommend they want three-eighths to half an inch clearance from here to the bottom of the oil pan. We put this at seven and a quarter, just under, well, actually just under on one side and seven and a quarter on the other side. And the one piece oil pan gasket we have is probably 170 thick. We're over three eighths of an inch, so we're in between three eighths and a half an inch, so we're, we're good. Not only that, I marked this. So what I had to do is you can't put this on straight. This is a six valve interference fit, this pickup. I believe it's six though. You might have to double check that. And if you try and put it in by hand, it'll usually be crooked. And a lot of guys, what they're gonna do is they're gonna pound these in, then they'll tip this up and they'll set the oil pan on and they'll try and clearance the oil pan that way. The problem is this is an interference fit. And once it's fit and we, we lower to raise it to any, to any extent, it takes away that interference fit and it effectively can't do its job properly anymore. I put it in here so it just it's just barely in there, just so it's held and so it's straight. I have it where I want it, I have it marked, and I'll hammer it on from there. But I just want to let people know that if you do put it all the way in and move it, you effectively take away your interference fit. There's a good chance it could come out. So what people have done is decided that, hey, I'll just tap weld that on there, it'll be fine. And uh, I see a lot of them still, they're uh, not fine. Whether the tack weld holds or not is a, uh, well, I've actually seen both. I've seen it where the pump is, or pardon me, the pickup is in a different location and the tack wells don't line up or it still fell off. So if you're going to use it, this system, just utilize the interference fit, measure it up, get it as close as you can. I mean, three eighths to half an inch is a pretty wide margin. So if you're a little bit off one side or you don't feel comfortable, just put it in the middle. Take this to the bench and either buy that Melling MCAT 62 tool. Yeah, 62, 5 eighths. And uh, it just has a collar and a little bent rod up to here. Put it on a piece of uh, wood and hammer it on. Or use your 5 eighths wrench and it'll do the same thing. I've used this wrench for many uh, oil pumps and uh, pickups. What we'll do is we'll install that. and Well, we have and we'll, we'll put it all the way on. Then I'm going to take the oil pump apart real quick, 
go through it, make sure there's no birds, no flash, nothing going on in there, no dirt. Um, use some assembly lube, put it back together and get it ready to go on. I don't know if I'll include that in the video, but I do it on every pump. And then we'll move on with uh, torquing up the short block and obviously the oil pump and putting in our seals, our timing cover and our uh, oil pan. Hey, let's try and get this rear seal in right now. So lots of people put the seal retainer in and put the seal in later. And I must have missed the memo. I've been putting the seal in the seal retainer and put it on the engine for quite some time. I've always been successful in doing it, albeit it has been harder sometimes than others. So if you're a little more comfortable waiting until the seal retainer is on the engine, taking it off the stand and installing it after, it's absolutely 100% fine. You can do it either way. I'm going to do it this way. We'll get this installed as well. We'll do the timing cover. And uh, we have our oil pump pickup on our oil pump there. So I'll just set you up here. And uh, So for these, it's pretty simple. I just use the old, uh, it's a power fist. A little mallet here. And I just tap it all the way around. Easily. You don't have to be hard on these. They go in pretty easy. It sounds louder than it really is, or I mean, it sounds harder than it really is. I'm not hitting it that hard at all. I want to make sure we're even. And of course, we'll check on the back sides as well. Check all the way around, make sure we didn't knock our spring out, we didn't do that. We can see in our grooves, if we've made it all the way in with the, uh, the end of the uh, seal. So that one's good. So let's get that installed. Okay, I actually, uh, I repositioned you guys. I'm going to try and put the seal on again. I don't like doing it twice, but okay, number one thing. We have the seal in there. Behind this lip, there's a spring. So we want to make sure that we don't fold this lip over at all. If we fold that lip over, we're going to lose the spring. This isn't probably the recommended way to put a seal on, but it's the way we're going to do it. Well, it's the way I'm doing it tonight. So basically, make sure your gasket is partially there. Because it's uh, going to be hard to get on after. So I generally just kind of start the seal. So you'll see at the bottom. Um... I'm trying to get a light here. This is hard to do. I don't have the proper light and stuff. But basically, we have the seal starting along the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're just going to roll the seal in all the way up. But what I mean by that, instead of just pushing the seal on, okay, we'll get it to roll in a little bit. So we'll get it to move a little bit. And then we're going to push in on the seal. So I'm going to push the seal in. Oops, just lost it. Okay. So I don't roll it. Okay, now I'm going to push it in. So I just basically, I'm just squishing the seal into the seal retainer a little bit at a time. Okay. And what's, what that's allowing me to do is protect the lip of the seal. And get the other part over top of the crankshaft. Alright. So. As I continue to do this. It'll get a little bit harder toward the end. But. I think we're getting there. Okay. A little more. There we go. We got it. So that's all you really have to do. And just by doing that alone. What we just did there we were able to put the seal on and we haven't lost the spring. You see the seals out all the way around. You'll know if you lost the spring, you'll see it. It'll leak. You might have a little bit of problems bolting it on. 
so everything looks good okay now a lot of people probably don't recommend doing that it does take some practice I, I won't lie to you it's not the easiest thing to do make sure your gaskets in place because you only have a dowel on one side push the seal on now our bolt we have special bolts for this seal so we have a stud we have a long bolt so we want this long bolt now you don't have to use the factory ones if you don't want but if you have them and you took them out you can reuse them we'll put that one in the side with the dowel pin the long stud we're going to put in this side okay then we have the two that are a little bit different and they go to the toward the bottom so there's four bolts in total well three bolts and one uh one stud holding the seal retainer on we'll do these up and we'll start on something else so i hope this helped people just take your time just push it in what the what the seal like the lip of a roll up don't push it out don't kink it you'll be fine so when you do your uh bottom seal timing cover seal pardon me Try and start it off as straight as you can. You don't want to beat the thing in there. I like to use a an LS lower sprocket gear to do this. I make sure we get it in even. This one's a little difficult for some reason. This is actually one of the hardest ones, I've done, hardest ones I've done in a long time. Anyway, it's in. We can double check it here. All the way around the bottom of the lip to make sure. We can see we're even. That one went in quite hard. I'm not really sure why. But it's in. Got a little bit of silicone. Just a little bit of a protective... Uh, a little bit of protection from a leak. Basically, if I have any paint over spray or anything like that in there, I just want to make sure it doesn't create a leak. So that's in. Again, when you're doing things on film, they're uh, a lot harder than when you're doing it without that. We have our rear seal in. We have our timing cover ready to go on. We'll, uh, we'll get ready to bolt that on. Okay, we're just going to do these timing chain bolts up here real quick because we have some silicone on the timing cover gasket and want it to dry. We're going to use a blue uh, Loctite style sealer on the uh, bolts and we're going to torque them up to 22 foot pounds. Or, that's probably a little too much sealer. Or uh, 260, was it 264 inch, inch pounds? 22 times 12 yeah 264 so that's what we'll torque it up to and then we'll get the timing cover on here real quick i use an inch pound um torque wrench for this part i just don't like using the uh, the bigger torque wrenches on the smaller bolts is really all that is just a preference So 264. We'll go to 150 each first. That's it. Now that I guess you can see that. Fifty, sixty. There we go. check them we're good to go we'll get that timing cover on we put the seal on already find a little assembly loop there you can see the timing cover is uh gasket is moving around a little bit we've already got the bolts cleaned up for this so it makes it a little bit easier. Get all these bolts in before the silicone dries.
So some of the other things to consider when you're putting your engine together is the climate you live in. Are you going to use a block heater? Are you not going to use a block heater? Probably a good time to do it up would be right about now. So let's just install this one here real quick. If anybody wants to know what I used, I'm going to use water on the rubber o-ring. That was it. Looks like you can see it in there really well. It's pointing toward 9 o'clock if we run underneath. It's all good. Alright, well, that's done. We're going to continue with the oil pump. Um, I tore it apart real quick. I just want to take a look. Seeing that we do pound a screen in there. And, uh... These are just castings, right? So we want to check for any flash, but I think if you can see in this hole down here, I'm trying to, to move it around. You'll see some casting flash at the bottom at about the 10 or 11 o'clock position there. So we're just going to whip that out of there. I'm going to give this a quick brush down and then uh, we'll uh, blow it out with air and put it back together. Okay, so we cleaned everything up. There's a little bit of debris in here, not too much, just a little bit of the flash like I showed you. I'm not too sure that came out on camera. We took this uh, and blew it out. There's a shuttle in here. Um, in, in the spring. Now, a lot of people just knock this roll pin out and put a, put a pink spring in there and make this into their version of a high-volume pump. You can... You can do that if you think you need it. You can actually buy these springs separately. I've seen them on Summit for sale. But we're going to keep this as a as a regular M55. So I'm just going to reassemble this pump real quick and we'll get it on the engine. Before you install your oil pump, make sure you put some assembly lube. Some people use Vaseline. Some people use assembly lube. Not in the bolt hole. Go into the other hole. Um, that attaches to the top of the main. And then spin it around on here. I've used Torkoal. It's uh, it's good stuff. I like it. You can put more. You can put a little more in if you want a little less. It'll just help it when you fire it up initially, but it'll protect everything inside as well, right? So make sure you put something in there. Let's get this on. Okay, before we put the oil pump on, like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna. Uh, I always save the bottom end torque till the end. Same temperature and everything. Everything in the room's the same. We have our uh, torque wrench set to 55, and we're going to get going and torque up the uh, rod caps here. So let's let's get her done. Right off the bat, I won't go to 55. I'll go to probably uh, 25 or 30. I'll finish at 55. Double check all your stuff. Don't want anything to be a problem. Okay. So that's the first four. Now, one of the things I want to show everybody is when you put your timing cover on, most of the guys just use a bolt or something in the end of the crankshaft. Here's where that quarter inch socket comes into play. Number one, you don't have to go all the way on if you don't want, if you don't want to try and use your thick uh, crankshaft socket. And it's easy to turn over. So you can turn the engine over and do the next step. You don't have to grab the, uh, you won't grab the seal typically, but make sure the end's clean anyway. I don't go all the way into the seal. So that's an easy way to turn it over and then stuff the bolt in there. And uh, if you have one of those, give it a shot. All right, we'll finish these up and we'll uh, continue on. Okay, so a couple quick tips. If you're putting on your oil pump, and you think that collar is really difficult to put on? It absolutely can be. You really have to press on that. Sometimes. Not all the time. In this situation, we have to. Basically, line up your uh, your tabs and push those together. But getting on the oil pump is probably the tougher part of the two. Anyway, we'll just set that in there. Just for a quick recap, we lubed everything up. And the oil pump, our uh, our rods and mains are all torqued up. 
timing chain that was done already we're good to go so we need to torque this up to 65 foot pounds and uh will essentially be the end of this part of the build the short block so let's get that done one steady pull here we go all right we'll get ready to put the oil pan on okay when you install your oil pan i always put silicone in the corners it's not even it doesn't even look good when i do it I do that because I don't want to fight with the leak. A lot of people learn a lot of different ways of doing things. And I always tell people, just do what's comfortable for you. I, uh, I don't like going back and fixing leaks, so I use a lot more silicone than I probably need to. But it's all good. I just want to set this in here. Make sure it fits in nice and snug. You don't have any uh, remnants of the gasket where the holes are drilled, block any of the holes. You got your two studs on the back. Make sure you uh, and actually press down on these. I want to see, there we go, silicone. I want to see silicone squished out of those corners so I know it's there. Perfect. I love the one-piece oil pans, um, one-piece oil pan gaskets, pardon me. They're great. Now with this oil pan, we, uh, we elected to buy a brand new one. So these are ceramic coated from wherever they come from. And they're, they're actually a great buy. They're, uh, I just wiping the inside of it out here. I think I bought it for $50 off of Rock Auto, if I remember correctly. One of the things you want to do when you set the oil pan on, make sure you check to make sure all the bolt holes line up so you don't start most of the bolts, not all of them, and then try and force them in. We're good on this one. Now remember, these engines have oil pan rails on them. So, let's get those on. Get some bolts and get it on. Okay, so we're just going to put this harmonic balancer on to wrap up the short block. We have quite a groove in this, so I'm just going to, yeah, it's pretty good. So what we have here is a speedy sleeve, which I've uh, dropped on the floor, with an installer tool. Okay, and this is the part number I'm using right here. It's an 88176 National Oil Seal. So I'm just gonna prep this and get it ready to put on. Okay, so we we wipe this all down with uh I can use a scotch spray pad to make it nice and shiny. I'm gonna uh when I looked on the website, or pardon me, in the box, the instructions, it said use a non-hardening sealant, which can be construed in many ways when you're installing these. But what I'm going to use is Hyvalmar. If you've never heard of it, you can look it up. Probably not really the use for Hyvalmar. But that's what we're going to use it for. doesn't bother me to use it. It also says to measure to that point, but... Eh, I think we'll figure it out. Eh, I should probably measure it. You don't want to go past the point of the area you're trying to seal. Basically half an inch. Yeah, we're gonna cover the area no matter what. All right, so basically it says uh, set that on there. Make sure it's square. It's not. And pound it on. See how this works out. Check it every so often. So far, so good. Still no. 
I'm not hitting it hard. Still on there? And a little ways to go. All right. That should cover that. Let's take a look and see what we've uh, created here. Right on. Looks good. We'll just uh, clean that up and get ready to install. Okay, so the stuff we used, it says a non-hardening sealant. I'm not really sure why. I just used the Hylomar formula. It's great if you don't want to lose a particular gasket if you're working with aluminum engines or you're doing a lot of work taking stuff apart and testing. I love it for that. Again, we cleaned this all up. Clean the inside as best as you can. Make sure you don't have any paint or anything in there. And we'll get this installed. Well, first, always make sure. I know this sounds kind of funny. But especially when you add a little bit of thickness to the seal, make sure that you add a little bit of lubricant to uh, this area. Just protect the seal and fire up. We're going to get it on the engine and uh, get it put on. All right, we just slid this on. We'll use a, a belt, our mock baluster installation tool. These go on relatively easy. Back in the, some people still pound these on. I, uh, I don't like to do that. If I can help it, if you have the tool, use it, right? My bearings don't get anymore, but it's uh, usually when they go on relatively easy, it's not a big deal. So far, so good. Okay, we got that installed. Our heater's on, so we'll shut this off and pick up when the heater shuts off. Okay, let's do one more check before we wind this down. All we're going to do is we're going to go to TDC, nice, and make sure that our timing mark is dead on zero. So watch the gauge, or the dial indicator. Think we're right there. Yeah. Let's see where we are. Perfect. Perfect. Right on zero. So that's something you can always check when you're building your engine. Just to double check. And uh that way you always know. Hey, I checked that when it was apart. Okay, just to wind this video down, I uh, I appreciate everybody that watches these videos and uh, subscribes. I try and uh, get some of this stuff done. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get things out than it should. But it will be getting quicker, I do promise. If you're building a TBI engine, I just wanted to leave you with a couple of things here real quick. Underneath this motor mount bolt, there's a bolt here for the uh, oil pan. And what you need to put there is a stud if you have an automatic transmission. And that stud holds your transmission um, cooling line bracket. So if you're missing a bolt and you have a stud, that's probably why. Right here, I don't know if I touched on this earlier in the video, I meant to. Make sure you take those plugs out, those quarter inch uh, plugs. They're kind of soft. And the reason you want this one out here on the passenger side is I believe on a lot of the years. This will, uh, that's where your uh, knock sensor will be. So before you get too far and get too far away from where you're at here, maybe address those small problems so you're not fighting with them in the truck. And uh, we're going to get started on the cylinder heads and rocker gear ASAP.